Usually when we think about Land Rovers, we think about big, opulent, luxurious 4x4s which can basically tackle any sort of environment while being cocooned in luxury. But with this, the new Discovery Sport, a lot of people have been saying that this is more of a car which is pick your kids up from school and fill the trunk with groceries. But today we're here to find out if Land Rover has actually gone soft with this new Discovery Sport or is it as versatile as they say. First off, this is the facelift of the Discovery Sport. So Land Rover has done some very minor touch-ups to the exterior with these updated LED headlights, LED taillights and new bumpers. It sure does look much more premium all around, but like most JLR products nowadays, the main glow up is on the inside. It surely does look very futuristic and minimalistic in here. Gone are those tacky buttons and that stupid round gear selector which I used to mistake as a volume knob and in come these new touch buttons and this more simple shift knob. Do I like it? Well, it sure is very futuristic but there is no haptic feedback through these buttons which is a big letdown because half of the time you don't know what you're touching. The gear knob is a great upgrade though. Land Rover has also done some great use of the AC dials over here. Press these buttons in the middle and the left one substitutes as the fan dial and the right one becomes your terrain response selector. Maybe it's a little bit of overkill but it's cool nonetheless. But can the new Discovery Sport still prove to us that it's a real Land Rover underneath even though on top it looks like a family SUV? Let's find out. So is the Discovery Sport something that your rich auntie will drive or is it that manly car that you've always wanted and you think you have a lot of hair on your chest? Well at least in this loose gravel kind of situation, it's faring up pretty well. Of course the Discovery Sport comes equipped with the legendary Land Rover Terrain Response System which automatically reads the ground below you and gives you the best sort of setting for your four wheel drive system. ABS system and many more things. Uh, you can flick through the terrain response system by pressing this button down here and switching to the dials. You have mud and rut, you have gravel and snow and you also have sand mode which is quite helpful from time to time. You also get sports mode in this car but come on you're tricking no one. This is not a sporty car by any means. It is meant to be a family car or a semi off-roader at times. You also get paddle shifters on the steering wheel but I do not think anyone is going to use them in any sort of situation. One thing that I didn't really like about this setup is the 2 litre Ingenium diesel engine. In the Evoque since it's so compact, so small and weighs significantly lesser than Discovery Sport, it works pretty well over there because it has less weight to tug around. Whereas in a Discovery Sport since it weighs so much more than the Evoque, it feels a little less grunty at times, it feels a little underpowered shall I say. But the specs for this engine are still pretty impressive for a 2 litre engine. 177 horsepower, 430 newton meters of torque. So you're not going to get stuck anywhere but, but maybe sometimes you'll have a little bit of problem in overtaking at times. Not all the time but in certain situations. Paired to this engine is the 9 speed automatic transmission which is decently responsive, which shifts pretty well but at lower speed it's still a little bit clunky it's always a little confused on which gear to select uh, to be in the power band but you start getting used to it and this thing is a cruise machine on the highways apart from that you also get a lot of goodies on this car for off-roading you get the ATPC system which is basically a low speed cruise control system for off-road situations if you know what I mean so basically you engage it, set the speed to whatever you want and the car will crawl up those rough terrains by itself which is pretty impressive. But come on, who are we kidding? The Discovery Sport is going to be used 95% of the time in the city. 
So how does it fare as an everyday daily driver? Well, it fares up actually pretty well. Keep in mind that this is not the type of car which you will have as your second or third car. It is actually a very good first car because it has enough room for your whole family because you also have an extra row at the back. So it's a seven seater as well. You have a lot of cubby holes, a lot of storage spaces. And in fact, since this is a car made for the 21st century, you have a lot of charging ports as well. So if your teenagers or your uh, children want to play on their phones or do something in the back and they have low battery, there are a lot of charging ports at the back. You get the new Land Rover uh, infotainment system up front. Not the best system, I have to say. It is quite laggy. It is not very responsive, but it gets the job done. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, so that's also a big plus point for it. Uh, you get this semi-digital instrument cluster in front of you. A lot of people will say that this looks a bit tacky, but over time I've gotten used to it. And actually, if you think about it, it's a great way to do cost cutting because in the real world, no one is going to change the dials from those dual dial setup to a single dial setup in the middle. So this is a great way to do cost cutting because you can have loads of information in the middle. But if you go for models above this or if you go for the top end model, which is the R Dynamic, you do not have to deal with this. You get a completely digital instrument cluster, which is again pretty decent as we've seen in the Jaguar XC before. So the steering wheel also has quite a lot of functionality built into it. You have your menu buttons over here for the uh, center display. You have your cruise control buttons also set over here. It has this gloss black finish on top which looks pretty good and it is quite functional although I feel it tricky sometimes to touch the buttons because I really don't know where I'm touching. That said, the Discovery Sport is a massive vehicle for the price. No Mercedes, Audi, BMW is even close to how big and roomy this one is. With the last row down, the boot is a massive 740 litres and you also get some handy tethering points to tie down luggage. The middle row folds down automatically and the last row gets its own AC controls. The giant panoramic sunroof makes the car feel even more roomy inside. So, why would you buy this car? Well, first of all, the big advantage that this thing has over its competitors is of course the extra row at the back. You can take more people and go on longer journeys without any sort of hassle. Then again, you also have the great auto-terrain response system which can basically read whatever ground you're on and you can change the mode accordingly. It does all of that automatically so you don't have to think twice about it. So you can tackle any sort of terrain, any sort of road without any hassle. If you can get over some of the weird quirks that this car has, like the weird uh, semi-digital instrument cluster, the uh, button on the center console which you have to press to change the fan speed or the auto terrain response system, those are some of the quirks that I really don't understand, it just added more. But if you can get over that, then this is a very good car. No Mercedes, no Audi, no BMW in the range has an extra row at the back. So if you're someone looking for a car which is great for your family, great for long journeys, well, Discovery Sport is your contender. So if you want something like that, check this car out for sure.